Welcome to the cabin. Today we're painting a plague bearer using mostly contrast paints. So we start off as normal by cutting the pieces from the sprue with our clippers. Um, and after this, I go through the different parts with a modeling knife just to remove any excess part of the sprue and to smooth them over with a file like this just to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. I also use a mold line remover to go through the sides of the model to make sure the mold lines are uh, not visible anymore. After that I glue the model together just as normal using the plastic glue, this one from Citadel, but it doesn't matter what type you use. Now this model had some gaps on it, it's one of the older kits uh, from Games Workshop, so I'm using some Milliput Super Fine that I'm um, putting on these little gaps here with my sculpting tool. Uh, and there's a little neat trick that you can use with Milliput. If you take some alcohol um, as your lubricant instead of water, the uh, Milliput melts down very nicely and you can even manipulate it with your paintbrush like this and it still retains all its qualities. So you can make a very smooth and easy transition. You can even put some in the alcohol and make sort of a wash uh, that you can apply easily like I'm doing here to the shoulders. Once that's dry, you could just take some uh, fine grit sandpaper and file it down so that the surface is completely smooth like I'm doing right here. The model has now been undercoated with Wraith Bone and it's ready to paint. I'm going to use mostly contrast paints here, starting with Plague Bearer Flesh uh, over pretty much the whole body, trying to avoid any areas that aren't the flesh. Um, but you can be fairly rough with this one. We're going to go back and fix that later. After that, I am diluting some Militarum Green, and I'm trying to put this one mostly in the recesses. I'm not doing a wash all over the model anymore. Um, try to blend this a little bit. You can even use a contrast medium to blend it out with a fresh brush um, just to get some nice transitions here. And finally, we're doing Creed camo with the same type of procedure here, very diluted, only in the recesses, and trying to be a little bit more uh, selective with this wash. After this, we're going to highlight the skin using Screaming Skull and Ogryn Camo. I'm mixing the two together in about a two to one mix and then carefully dry brushing all over the skin. Um, this is just to bring out some of those highlights in the skin. Uh, by this point, the, the flesh is all finished and we are now uh, tidying up the other parts of the miniature with Wraith Bone once again just to prepare it for the contrast paints we're going to use. All the pustules are then painted with Nasdrag Yellow, a uh, heavy coat of this one. Make sure that it's in uh, around all the pustules and getting into the, the recesses to get that deeper shade into them. You could leave them like this, but I chose to do a highlight of Uriel Yellow just to um, make them pop a little bit more. Now it's the wounds in the skin, and I'm using Magos Purple for this as the first coat. Um, and when this has dried, I'm doing Volupus Pink as the second coat. Both of them are undiluted straight from the pot. Now we do all the bone details. So we have the toenails over here, as well as the teeth and the horn. And just a liberal coat, try to push those pigments into the deep parts where you want them. After that, we highlight with a shop de bone, uh, an edge highlight on the different bone details there. And the final part of the bones and the horns is uh, snake bite leather, which I'm trying to put in the very deepest parts. You can also fade this out with some contrast medium on a fresh brush um, on the horn, for example. 
Then we're doing Basiliconum Grey um, on the eye. You just want the Basiliconum to be a shadow around the eye. Followed by a layer of Pallid Witch Flesh to bring out the eye again. And finally, using a detail brush, we're putting Abaddon Black in the very middle of the eye to create the pupil. Now we are base coating the sword with Rhinox Hide. And by this point, the miniature is almost complete. I am putting on a coat of satin varnish at this point, um, just to seal everything in before our technical details. The first of which is some pigment that I've diluted with pigment binder, all from Vallejo. I'm using dark red ochre all over the sword. And when this dries up, it gets a very nice texture and a very matte finish to it. Uh, and we finish off the sword here, that rusty look with a storm host silver edge highlight. Now we're doing a blood for the blood god, a technical paint in the wounds. I'm not coating all uh, parts of the wounds. I'm putting it selectively, mostly in the deeper parts and letting some of that other pink shine through. And there you have it. That's the finished Plague Bearer. Quite an easy model to paint, very quick with the contrast paints. Um, I think I spent about an hour and a half painting it. It was very quick. Uh, you can see it here on its finished base, which I will not be showing in this video, but uh, there will be another additional video coming out where I show you how to make a swamp base like this that's very suitable for Nurgle. Thank you so much for watching. Please uh, subscribe and like and comment if you uh, enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.